Bionicchaos.com is dedicated to exploring biomedical data science and engineering. It offers interactive tools and insights into data visualization and signal processing. The site includes sections on various topics related to biomedical technology, providing resources and information for those interested in the field. The Fuzzy Logic section on Bionicchaos explores the application of fuzzy logic in biomedical data analysis. It features interactive tools and examples to help users understand how fuzzy logic can be used for decision-making and pattern recognition in biomedical contexts. For more information, visit the Fuzzy Logic page, slash bionicchaos.com slash fuzzy logic slash. The idea for this application is that while you scroll through the EG signal, all the membership functions for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk get updated on the fly. Ideally, most of this stuff should have been done in JavaScript, but that might not be possible. So this is the code we currently have. That's what it looks like. Yes, it has this scrolly bit. This might not work. Let's roll back. Hey, so we have this two JavaScript the prompts yeah control i yeah implementation of ai is absolutely crucial isn't it is yes, we have this class eg chat container that overflows and that's okay so we need to add an event listener for the scroll event on the container, calculate the visible data range based on the scroll position. That sounds legit. Update the chart with the visible data. Update the membership functions with the visible EG data. Okay, I've got all the prompts. So I'm just doing it in another window. I think it's fairly obvious that we are using a bot to generate the code. It's ignored. <laughs> it's ignored the prompts at the end. What? Why? And this is the 4.0, GPT 4.0. How about if we regenerate with GPT 4, the legacy? Yeah, while it's generating, please go check out the website. There are lots of interesting tools. Let me know what you think. That will be big help keeps ignoring my stuff if the gpt gods are not acting today this is not gonna work is it do i need to place it in the beginning of the prompt as well okay we uh, width of the chart seem okay i'm able to scroll and everything which is great so everything seemed to work all the values are adjusting as I scroll, which is great, but uh, the height of the EEG chart is excessive. And also this weird thing when you scroll, the EEG chart height parameter doesn't seem to change anything. It doesn't seem to work. It doesn't actually change the height of the chart. I think we might need to look in the into the JavaScript code as well. And if I just share this image, we'll just be able to see what's wrong with it. Obviously, it's the unnecessary scrolling on the y-axis. Now, the overall uh, look of the page looks fine, but do you see a problem with the EEG chart itself? Should be hints in the images provided <laughs> yes i see the issue with the eg charts it has a vertical scroll bar indicating that the chart is taller than intended blah 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 yeah, it seems to understand uh, what the problem is it's regenerating the whole uh, javascript code this will fix anything we have two three four lines of code anymore at the moment just can't actually do anything hmm uh, that didn't help what exact changes did you make to the code uh, i'm thinking 
uh, specifically JavaScript. It's uh, uh, just thing. Uh, can we essentially change the Y axis scaling for the EG data chart? Change the amplitude or something. Might have to change the Python code as well. Uh, I changed something, but 0.5 did it. 0 0.5. Yeah, don't like this. So, uh, so stuff is uh, using ChatGS, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Can we just make sure there is no scroller on the Y axis? We do not need it. Okay. <laughs> we don't have the scroll, but the data doesn't fit. How long is the JavaScript code? Yeah, 236 lines of code. So the funny thing is supposed to GitHub Copilot and JGPT is actually able to deal with that much code. Yeah, GitHub Copilot. Yeah, give me generic stuff because it's not actually looking at the code. The ratio of the data your chat height. Yeah, that's that. And you chat. So what do we need? We need this image. Uh, we need this code and uh, CSS as well. Yeah, CSS didn't actually do anything. So currently have two, three, five. Didn't actually change anything, did it? Uh, that didn't work. The EEG signal chart is still not fully visible in terms of height. So we should be able to scroll, but uh, the height should always fit the entire chart uh, canvas see image attached chart data border color rg five one ninety two one ninety two one fill false line tension 0 0.1 console log transfer right seem to have actually uh, done it by changing the css the styling for the page it still regenerated the whole javascript i don't know why to 30 5 to 38. Oh, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's just scaling everything. Okay, the artifact risk it should be reduced. Uh, can we do 1000? Yeah, where's this uh, display G data? quite the medium variable for this right so you would expect the artifact risk yeah i don't know what's going on it's not the scaling the membership functions outside the range amplitude ah there's something weird something is really weird uh, let's just try getting rid of the styling for a sec. Okay, nothing works then. Well, at least we know the file being loaded. Yeah, I suspect it's uh, chat.js that doesn't allow us uh, just behaving funny. The app.py file you provided contains a Flask application designed for EEG data analysis, synthetic EEG generation, and artifact detection using fuzzy logic. Here's a summary of its main features and functions. Key components. One, Flask setup. Basic Flask setup with routes and views. Two, Fuzzy Logic System. Uses ESC Fuzzy to create a Fuzzy Logic System for artifact risk detection based on amplitude and frequency of EEG signals. Three, EEG Analysis Functions. Functions for pre-processing EEG data, generating synthetic EEG data, and applying a bandpass filter. Four, Routes. Several endpoints for generating synthetic EEG data, analyzing EEG data, and retrieving fuzzy membership functions. The index.html file you provided is a well-structured HTML document that serves as the front end for the EEG fuzzy logic analysis application. It includes metadata for search engines and social media, references to style sheets and JavaScript libraries, and sections for displaying EEG data and fuzzy logic analysis results. Key components of the HTML file. One, metadata. Contains various meta tags for SEO, description, keywords, and open graph properties. Two, header includes the website logo and navigation menu. 
Three, scripts and style sheets. Links to external style sheets and scripts, such as Chart.js for rendering charts. Four, main content. Sections for displaying the EEG chart, artifact risk, and membership functions. Start index equals EEG data dot length total visible data points. Const scroll percentage EEG scroll container dot scroll left, EEG scroll container dot scroll width, EEG scroll container dot client width. Const the screenshot shows the EEG fuzzy logic analysis application with the EEG chart and the membership functions displayed correctly. The chart is properly fitted within the container and the artifact risk is displayed below the chart. Here are a few points and suggestions based on the screenshot. One, chart display. The EEG chart appears to be displaying data correctly with horizontal scrolling enabled. The artifact risk value is shown below the chart, which looks good. Two, membership functions. The membership functions for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk are displayed below the artifact risk value. Current values for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk are shown below each chart. Three, respond. The layout looks neat and the sections are well organized. Four, CSS and JS integration. The CSS styles seem to be applied correctly, ensuring the charts fit within their containers. JavaScript functions for fetching data, displaying charts, and handling membership functions are working as intended. Additional suggestions. One, improve readability of membership functions. Increase the font size or add more spacing in the membership function charts to improve readability. Two, enhance data display. Consider adding tooltips or data point highlights on the EEG chart for better user interaction and data insights. Three, performance optimization. Ensure the data fetching and rendering processes are optimized for performance, especially with large data sets. Four, error handling. Implement more detailed error messages and user feedback mechanisms for scenarios where data fetching or analysis fails. Five, styling enhancements. Add more styling to differentiate between different sections and make the application more visually appealing. If there are specific changes or features you want to add, feel free to let me know. So, troubles still we are using a JGPT to try and fix the code. So we actually loaded the files in from the project. The current problem, yeah, it seemed not to be clearing the canvas. Brain scans. So this is synthetic EEG data. Uh, normally when brain scans are mentioned, it would be probably imaging, which we also have some on the site yeah this is just uh this needs fixing as well because <laughs> it doesn't fit the page but it's just showing just some basic uh wavelet transforms of uh, image compression that i mean can be used generally for anything but specifically for a um, brain imaging data be used for training ah in this case so training we have training in this case no there's no training this will be much more simple so this is a fuzzy logic algorithm uh so it's much more basic it's uh, more like an explainable ai it should be well not really ai maybe machine learning this will uh, look at amplitude and frequency and determine artifact risk based on membership functions currently there's some implementation issue so it doesn't really work but what we expect to have is when you scroll for eg and all of a sudden you see say an emg artifact so this artifact risk should shoot up through the roof based on the amplitude and frequency membership functions so i tried to fix this would be basic stuff yeah eventually we'll have to adjust the membership functions because of the current frequency is 27 i don't know where the 27 number coming from yeah we need to fix this page as well for the both images to beat nicely on it sometimes yeah the images are different size so uh, some of them just work by default Yes, in this case, 
Um, yeah, could uh, determine your number of beats for compression, for wavelet compression, and the number of levels, see what effects it has. Uh, most importantly, you have a PSNR a value, which is the peak uh, signal to noise ratio, and this will essentially be, I think, determining the chance of you being able to reconstruct uh, the image to its original form or not being able to. This number is not, um, its dynamic range seems to be a bit too small. It's only, it's always around 30, even though I will expect, uh, what would you expect? The signal to noise ratio, in this case, be very low, in this case, being higher. But, uh, yeah, let's get back to this quickly. I suspect we we'll have to reconstruct the whole thing because we're not able to fix stuff. Um, um, yeah, now a good way to go about it would be to just uh, uh, regenerate all the prompts required for this code to be regenerated from scratch. So let's see. So we have all the code we have the Flask backend, the HTML code, the JavaScript, the styling. They have an image of how it should look like. Now, instead of trying to solve errors, uh, can we take the whole code that was shared in this conversation and generate text-based prompts that will... Um, require another developer to generate the whole code from scratch. Actually generating the code is just asked for ask for the text prompts the generating code. I don't know why it's not able to generate the thing in one go, but it's okay. We have the HTML simplified. No it actually has all the stuff for the like the template for the website and stuff yeah checking production or not yeah we need the AI viewing at the same time so I was normally putting it on another, another screen so we have the application we have the code we have our AI doing the job we're also using a uh, github copilot as well but it uh, it's really struggling the long uh, apparently the code is too long artifact risk async function analyze and display eeg eeg data segment try const response equals ah that's the other the other thing the text to speech hey uh, can you describe the code uh, using text alone don't uh, include any code in your response sure here is a detailed textual description of the entire code base. Project Overview. This project is an interactive web application designed for EEG fuzzy logic analysis. The application showcases the use of fuzzy logic to identify various EEG patterns under different noise levels. Users can generate synthetic EEG data, analyze it, and view the results through dynamically generated charts. Backend, Flask application. Flask setup. The backend of the application is built using the Flask framework. It includes several routes to handle requests for generating synthetic EEG data, analyzing EEG data, and retrieving fuzzy membership functions. The application leverages NumPy for numerical operations, SciPy for signal processing, and SKFuzzy for fuzzy logic operations. Fuzzy logic system. The fuzzy logic system is set up with three main variables, amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. These variables are defined using fuzzy membership functions, specifically trapezoidal membership functions. The system includes rules to determine artifact risk based on amplitude and frequency values. For example, low amplitude and low frequency correspond to low artifact risk, while high amplitude and high frequency result in high artifact risk. EEG signal processing. Several functions are implemented to handle EEG signal processing. Synthetic EEG data generation. This function creates synthetic EEG signals, including periodic artifacts to simulate noise. Pre-processing EEG data. 
This function normalizes the EEG data and extracts key features such as amplitude and frequency using fast Fourier transform, FFT. Bandpass filtering. Additional functions are included to apply bandpass filters to the EEG data, helping to isolate specific frequency bands. Flask routes. The Flask application defines multiple routes. Index route serves the main HTML page. Generate EEG data route generates and returns synthetic EEG data in JSON format. Analyze EEG data route. Accepts EEG data, processes it, and returns the artifact risk along with average amplitude and frequency. Get membership functions route. Retrieves and returns the membership functions for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. Frontend, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, HTML structure. The HTML page includes metadata, provides information for search engines and social media integration. Header, contains the website logo and navigation menu. Main content section, displays the EEG chart, artifact risk value, and membership function charts for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. Additional content, describes how the tool works, its features, and technical details. Chat CSS styling, the CSS files. Okay, okay. Um, let's open another window for a sec, because, yeah, let's uh, stop it from running in here. That's actually, I'll explain why in a sec. The reason we are doing this is so that the GitHub Copilot has a better chance of actually doing something useful. So let's run it again. So just running from a different terminal. It's fine. Now, for example, this error. Okay, so we had the GP, JGPT 4.0 actually regenerating the thing. Uh, apparently, we have 235 lines of JavaScript. Okay, so we've got the JavaScript that's a bit longer now. We have a uh, style CSS. Just move them to the left so we remember which one we updated already. And the error went away. That's good. Okay, we expect this amplitude to go up. So the membership function is not working. The charts are updating. We want eventually a dot, like a red dot there. Uh, to indicate where the where we are on the chart, and those actually meant to have uh, names to them like low, medium, high, different colors, probably green, yellow, red. Uh, we will get there eventually. Yeah, we expect the artifact risk to be low over here and be high over there. Point at five. Point at point at two. Point eight five is it actually happening? Because I um uh, get now the big the big elephant in the room is this Python code. It was hundred and seventy-two lines, now it's hundred and twenty-eight. It was working bad uh, we actually have a body for the AI. You can actually load it up. Hopefully my machine won't crash though. Uh, we'll do some work on it before. It's called the uh, what's it called? Had some silly name. If I can't remember the name, I probably should have should change it. Uh, yeah, digital twin. So we have this avatar. Yeah, I think that would have been the updated code. Yeah, we have this. We can. I'll be chatting later, a good explanation of the code. Eventually I'll be... Sure. Here is a detailed textual description of the entire code base. Project Overview. This project is an interactive web application designed for EEG fuzzy logic analysis. The application showcases the use of fuzzy logic to identify various EEG patterns under different noise levels. Users can generate synthetic EEG data analyze it, and view the results through dynamically generated charts. Backend, Flask application. Flask, setup. The backend of the application is built using the Flask framework. It includes several routes to handle requests for generating synthetic EEG data, analyzing EEG data, and retrieving fuzzy membership functions. 
The application leverages NumPy for numerical operations, SciPy for signal processing, and SKFuzzy for fuzzy logic operations. Fuzzy logic system. The fuzzy logic system is set up with three main variables, amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. These variables are defined using fuzzy membership functions, specifically trapezoidal membership functions. The system includes rules to determine artifact risk based on amplitude and frequency values. For example, low amplitude and low frequency correspond to low artifact risk, while high amplitude and high frequency result in high artifact risk. EEG signal processing. Several functions are implemented to handle EEG signal processing. Synthetic EEG data generation. This function creates synthetic EEG signals, including periodic artifacts to simulate noise. Preprocessing EEG data. This function normalizes the EEG data and extracts key features such as amplitude and frequency using fast Fourier transform, FFT. Bandpass filtering. Additional functions are included to apply bandpass filters to the EEG data, helping to isolate specific frequency bands. Flask routes. The Flask application defines multiple routes. Index route serves the main HTML page. Generate EEG data route generates and returns synthetic EEG data in JSON format. Analyze EEG data route accepts EEG data, processes it, and returns the artifact risk along with average amplitude and frequency. Get membership functions route retrieves and returns the membership functions for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. Front end HTML, CSS, JavaScript, HTML structure. The HTML page includes metadata provides information for search engines and social media integration. Header contains the website logo and navigation menu. Main content section displays the EEG chart, artifact risk value, and membership function charts for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. Additional content describes how the tool works, its features, and technical details. This should be a page. It's called Digital Twin. Yes, yeah, sitemap, a twin. Yeah, this page actually has oops all the code required to make this face of yours uh, using Python. If you like, check it out. Pop the link in. Yeah, obviously there's a bit of a trouble uh, turning it into a web application because it's a bit heavy, quite heavy. I forgot the uh, another. A division in the HTML will make it better. Just format document. Yep. Yeah, I'll deploy it uh, later. A make a browser version. We have similar browser versions. They won't work because I'm using the camera at the moment. But there are a bunch. There's this music. A music detector. Pop it in there. Ah, oh, it's actually I'm testing in Chrome. Chrome works fine. Oh, and any Chromium based browser will work as well. Yeah, so which ones it's kind of, yeah, the music from hands is relying on the same kind of protocol, same, uh, same stuff. Yeah, you can check it out. Uh, I, I do have a GPU, so it will be working much faster on my machine. So your browser will be using the resources that you have. I tried it on the phone. Yeah, on the phone, it doesn't work really well, but I would assume on any desktop laptop should be working fine well it's all running in your in your browser so the data is not being sent uh, to the server or anything you yeah, obviously currently it won't work you have images of uh, videos of me using the, the tool but this one if you have the camera running this will be working for you as well yeah Failed to load the resource because I'm using it. It actually should have videos uh, on the page as well. I have to place them. I can do it right now. Now I'll go over over the entire site. Essentially, essentially place videos where where necessary, like over here. Let's, let's get. You could have that custom browser open and then use the body as the browser. Well, I could have another screen in front of it and yeah, cause actually, yeah, I'll probably turn it off cause it's taking up uh, resources. Uh, this, this base thing. Oh, why, uh, what's it, chat.js? When you scroll, 
it's minimizing the the chart and expanding it. I don't know. It's a funny, it's a funny thing. Ah, that hand on my forehead. This wasn't it. Wasn't actually there. That's my smiley. I have a stress ball with a smiley, smiley face on it. It's in my back. Yeah, I really want this to work though. Twenty-eight. Uh, let's try quickly. Thing else. Okay, in text alone, do not include any code. Can you explain this entire Python code in detail? Detailed explanation of the Python code. This Python code sets up a web application using Flask, which is designed to analyze EEG data using fuzzy logic. Here's a detailed breakdown of what each part of the code does. Importing libraries. Flask, used for creating the web application and handling HTTP requests and responses. NumPy, used for numerical operations on arrays. SciPy, used for signal processing, including FFT, Fast Fourier Transform, and filtering. Scikit Fuzzy, used for creating and evaluating fuzzy logic systems. Setting up the Flask application. The Flask application is initialized, which will later be used to define routes and handle web requests. Defining fuzzy variables and sets. Three fuzzy variables are defined. Amplitude, the strength of the EEG signal. Frequency, the rate at which the EEG signal oscillates. Artifact risk, the likelihood of the EEG signal containing artifacts, undesired noise. Each variable is associated with a range from 0 to 1.1 in steps of 0 0.1 and is given three membership functions. Low, medium, high. These membership functions are defined using trapezoidal shapes, which specify the degree to which a particular value belongs to each category, low, medium, high. Defining fuzzy rules and control system. Three fuzzy rules are created to determine the artifact risk based on the amplitude and frequency. If both amplitude and frequency are low, then the artifact risk is low. If either amplitude or frequency is medium, then the artifact risk is medium. If both amplitude and frequency are high, then the artifact risk is high. These rules are used to set up a fuzzy control system, which will be used to calculate the artifact risk based on input values. Implementing the analysis function. A function is created to analyze EEG data. It takes amplitude and frequency values as inputs. These values are fed into the fuzzy control system. The control system computes the artifact risk, which is then returned as output. Signal processing functions. Several functions are implemented for processing EEG data. Bandpass filter, a function to create a bandpass filter, which isolates frequencies within a specific range. Bandpass filter application, a function to apply the bandpass filter to a data set. Synthetic EEG data generation, a function to generate synthetic EEG data, including periodic artifacts to simulate noise. Pre-processing EEG data, a function to normalize the EEG data and extract key features like amplitude and frequency using FFT, extracting membership functions. A function is implemented to extract the membership functions of a fuzzy variable. It iterates through the terms low, medium, high, and retrieves the points defining each membership function. These points are returned in a structured format. Flask routes. Several routes are defined in the Flask application. Index route serves the main HTML page. Generate EEG data route generates synthetic EEG data and returns it in JSON format. Analyze EEG data route accepts EEG data via post request, pre-processes it, analyzes it using the fuzzy control system and returns the artifact risk along with average amplitude and frequency. Get membership functions route retrieves and returns the membership functions for amplitude frequency and artifact risk. Running the Flask application. Finally, the Flask application is set to run in debug mode, allowing for real-time updates and error tracking during development. Summary. This Python code integrates signal processing and fuzzy logic within a Flask web application to analyze EEG data. It generates synthetic EEG data, processes it, evaluates artifact risk using a fuzzy control system, and provides the results through a web interface. The application showcases the capabilities of fuzzy logic in handling imprecise data, making it suitable for educational and analytical purposes in biomedical signal processing. Doesn't this doesn't uh, this doesn't work though? So the Python code. It's 
pop the explanation at the bottom there. No, actually we might have it in uh, uh, HTML anyway, shall we? Question is, question is, can it regenerate? Wait, uh, can you also include all the variables from the code? They turn them into text. Yeah, well, essentially all the setup. Sure. Here is the detailed explanation of the entire Python code, including all the variables. Detailed explanation of the Python code with variables. This Python code sets up a web application using Flask, which is designed to analyze EEG data using fuzzy logic. Here's a detailed breakdown of what each part of the code does, along with the variables involved. Importing libraries. Used for creating the web application and handling HTTP requests and responses. NumPy, used for numerical operations on arrays. SciPy, used for signal processing, including FFT, fast Fourier transform, and filtering. Scikit Fuzzy, used for creating and evaluating fuzzy logic systems. Setting up the Flask application. App, the Flask application instance. Defining fuzzy variables and sets. Three fuzzy variables are defined. Amplitude, a fuzzy variable representing the strength of the EEG signal defined with a range from 0 to 1.1 in steps of 0 0.1. Frequency, a fuzzy variable representing the rate at which the EEG signal oscillates, defined with a range from 0 to 1.1 in steps of 0 0.1. Artifact risk, a fuzzy variable representing the likelihood of the EEG signal containing artifacts, undesired noise, defined with a range from 0 to 1.1 in steps of 0 0.1. Each variable is associated with three membership functions. Amplitude low, the low membership function for amplitude. Amplitude medium, the medium membership function for amplitude. Amplitude high, the high membership function for amplitude. Frequency low, the low membership function for frequency. Frequency medium, the medium membership function for frequency. Frequency high, the high membership function for frequency. Artifact risk low, the low membership function for artifact risk. Artifact risk medium, the medium membership function. Can we potentially only generate the EG in the back end, pass it all to the front end? So essentially, can we generate all the necessary data for this web application in the back end? Well, maybe even once. Well, once the application is starting, or should we just have static? If you can go over the pros and cons of uh, both options, but uh, essentially we want to move as much as possible to the front end. Okay, we are in an endless uh, error loop. Yeah, the EMG looks a bit less uh, realistic. It's fine. I'm sure we can fix this later. Um, the use of math JS again back into the JavaScript code. Uh, originally. It didn't work because I forgot to add the necessary line in the HTML code. I'll be going in circles with these uh, JavaScript modules. It's not happening. Okay, the Java, we seem to have uh, problems with the JavaScript the code from the CDN. Uh, can we go back? Um, and just do everything in Python, uh, including the visualization. So I want uh, a working code, Python only, uh, use any necessary libraries and generate complete uh, Python code. Don't worry about uh, JavaScript. So it's the same libraries as we had before. Well, we don't need Flask, do we? Yeah, it's uh, generated a Flask application. Okay, so it will still have the HTML. I meant uh, doing all the visualization in uh, Python as well, but okay. Well, this looks fine. Okay, within the, the HTML, can you also uh, generate the CSS uh, to make sure that all the charts appear on uh, one viewport? And also, how do you suggest um, scrolling through the EEG? We also 
need uh, the result of the fuzzy logic yeah so essentially going back so we have the uh, JavaScript within the HTML code uh, okay so the okay we want to still be able to scroll through the data we want the analysis result to be visible on top of the page also we want everything to fit into single um, page so all the charts are visible at once but the scrolling functionality is the most important so we can actually see what the regular eg clean eg versus eg with uh, noise has the uh, effect uh, on uh, the result of the fuzzy logic analysis you know, it's you know, using many many libraries and the html be served from python code these are components from the dash library which is used for building interactive web applications in python dash is built on top of flask plotly.js and react.js and it provides a framework for creating web-based data visualizations with minimal boilerplate code here's a brief explanation of each component you mentioned one dash the main module for creating a dash application it initializes the app and handles the integration with flask and other components two dash core components a module that contains higher level components for building dash applications these components include interactive graphs drop-downs, sliders, and other input elements. DCC.graph, a component for rendering plotly graphs. DCC.input, a component for creating input boxes. DCC.dropdown, a component for creating drop-down menus. DCC of slider, a component for creating sliders. Three, dash HTML components, HTML slur, a module that contains basic HTML components for building the structure of a dash application. These components correspond to standard HTML elements html.div, a component for creating a division or section in an HTML document. html.h1, html.h2, etc. Components for creating HTML headings. html.p, a component for creating paragraphs. imn, a component for displaying images. 4. Dash.dependencies, a module that contains the input and output classes, which are used for defining interactivity in Dash applications. These classes allow you to link components together so that changes in one component can update others. Input, used to specify the input component and the property that will trigger a callback. Output, used to specify the output component and the property that will be updated by the callback. Here's a simple example to illustrate how these components work together in a Dash application. Python import dash, import dash core components as DCC, import dash HTML components as HTML from dash.dependencies, import input output, Initialize the dash app. App equals dash dash. We do a plotly a JS. Wait, is this using React? Dash is built on top of React JS for its front end, which means it uses React components under the hood to render the web application. However, you don't need to write any React code yourself. Dash abstracts away the React components and provides a Python interface to build the web application. If using React under the hood is not acceptable, we can stick to a more traditional Flask application with static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to achieve the desired functionality. Here's how we can do it. One install required library. What would you suggest? Uh, keep using React or traditional Flask? So why keep <laughs> generating code? Sometimes it doesn't want to generate code, sometimes it only wants to. Given your requirements and preferences, let's weigh the options of using Dash, which leverages React, React, versus traditional Flask with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Using Dash with React under the hood. Pros. Interactivity. Dash makes it very easy to create interactive visualizations and dashboards. Integration. Dash components are tightly integrated with Plotly for powerful visualizations. Less code often requires less code to get interactive features working compared to writing the same in plain JavaScript. Cons, React dependency. Even though you don't write React code directly, Dash uses React under the hood. Abstraction. Sometimes the abstraction might be a bit too high if you need more control over the front-end behavior. 
using traditional Flask with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Pros, control. More control over the front-end implementation completely avoids React if that is a strict requirement. Flexibility, easier to integrate with other front-end frameworks or custom JavaScript as needed. Cons, more code, generally requires more boilerplate code to achieve the same level of interactivity. Complexity, handling dynamic content and state management can become complex and might require additional JavaScript libraries. Recommendation, if avoiding React is a strict requirement, go with the traditional Flask approach. This approach will give you complete control over your front end and avoid the dependencies you want to avoid. Although it might require a bit more code, it provides the flexibility and adherence to your preferences. Implementing traditional Flask with interactive visualizations. Here's a complete implementation using traditional Flask with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. One, install required libraries. Make sure you have the required libraries installed. Bash pip install flask, numpy, scipy, scikit, fuzzy, matplotlib. Two, flask application, app.py. Python from flask, import flask, jsonify, render template, request, send file, import. Yeah, I'll do traditional flask. This we might need to move to plotly. We could just implement it in Python first. Those artifacts should be at random times, shouldn't it? A fuzzy logic analysis result should be on top of the page also another thing a bring back the scrolling through the eeg i need to be able to scroll through the e synthetic eeg data on the first chart this is uh, so that only visible viewable visible window is being processed through the fuzzy logic algorithm so the result is adjusting as we scroll back and forth through the EEG data. Placing the script inside the HTML. Is that okay? Maybe. Yeah, we're back and not able to scroll. Okay, a couple of things. The synthetic EEG data window chart is too small another issue is that not all the charts fit on the screen at once and the main problem is that there is still no scrolling option so can we make sure it's there also keep the javascript in a separate file Ooh. we need to drop a chart.js a uh, can we perhaps drop chat js and use uh, plotly libraries instead also explain what's wrong with the attached uh, image need to change how it all works and all the charts can fit into one viewport no <laughs> hey, no this is worse let's try different approach sounds good says greed I'm okay this is slightly better but the EEG chart is not visible it seemed to be displayed when loading the page but then it disappears not only changes this in JavaScript so why so why generate the code I'm okay so still the charts don't fit the screen but that's that's okay the other bigger problem is that when uh, loading the page there are no errors but when starting to scroll uh, the following errors appear as seen in the second image it was just adding some debugging to the code so we hopefully able to see what might be going on clear the first image is when uh, loading the page and the second image is when scrolling through the eeg or trying to scroll through the eeg the load division by zero indicates there's an issue of how eeg data is being processed when normalizing the eeg data Let's add checks to handle potential issues 
such as an empty data set or zero standard deviation. Jumping through the loop, there's some serious debugging going on. The error indicates that the visible portion of the EG becomes empty when scrolling, suggests that there might be an issue with how the visible data is being sliced and passed to the backend for analysis. Let's adjust the JavaScript. Uh, okay, it's working now. Where's the. don't like how the scroll through the data works. Okay, now we able to scroll okay, which is great. Really appreciate that. But there are other issue, issues. What? How did that happen? There's something funny uh, going on. So just to be clear, the EG chart, why is it not the actual data that we are scrolling through using Plotly? At the moment, it seems to be an image of the chart that we are scrolling through. Uh, can you explain how that works? There's something not right with the chart, with the G chart. We actually wanted to be able to display the data instead of scrolling through an um, image of the chart. The artifact risk then, so the analysis, the result of the fuzzy logic algorithm should then be recalculated when we move back and forth through the chart. Also, we need to make sure the EMG noise is actually there uh, periodically within the signal. So we can actually see the difference in the artifact risk output. Let's adjust the implementation to ensure the EEG chart properly displays the data dynamically as you scroll and the fuzzy logic analysis updates correctly. We will also verify that the synthetic EEG data includes periodic EMG noise artifacts. Ensure synthetic EEG data includes periodic EMG noise. First, let's verify that the synthetic EEG data generation function includes periodic EMG noise. App.py Synthetic EEG data generation. Python def generate synthetic EEG length equal 5000, FS250, EMG free equals 4060, EMG amplitude 0 0.4, artifact interval equals 1000, t equals np.lin space best, length length endpoint equals false, EEG signal equal 0 0.05, np.sin 2 pi and 10 t plus np.random.normal 0 0.02 length. For i in range artifact interval length artifact interval, EMG length equals min artifact interval 10th, that's i. EMG signal equals mp.random.normal, zero. EMG amplitude, EMG length. EMG signal equals butter bandpass filter, MGM freak for EMG freak one, FS. EEG signal, I, I plus EMG length plus EMG signal. EEG signal equals np.round, you know, decimals equals two. Return EEG signal. Ensure Plotly displays the data dynamically. Next, we will adjust the JavaScript code to ensure Plotly correctly displays the EEG data and updates the analysis dynamically as you scroll through the chart. Updated main.js JavaScript document f ready function fetch the synthetic EEG data dot get slash generate EEG function a data length equals e data dot length const viewable window equals 500 number of samples to display at a time create the EEG chart with plotly const layout equals title synthetic EEG data xaxis title time samples yaxis title amplitude range mega 0.3.3 show legend false plotly dot new plot X array from length viewable window I, Y, EG data dot slice zero viewable window, type scatter, mode lines layout. Slash handle scrolling through the EEG data, day scroll container dot on scroll function, const scroll position equal this scroll left, const start index equal math, math floor scroll position this this dot scroll width to viewable window. Let end index equal start index viewable window. If end index data length, end index equals data length, const visible data equals EG data dot slice. Okay, how about the fact that the chart is not an actual data? It seems like the data is being produced in Python and then the chart is being transferred to the front end. Is this ideal?
Yeah, we're going back and forth with this one today. Not very successful, but it is what it is. Yep, this will give a build error. Expected because it did quite a major change. Maybe also updating HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, I need to restart the thing. Ah, uh, we have to redo the whole thing. There's something wrong. We have noise. Yeah, how's the artifact risk? There is something really wrong with the EEG first chart. Can we redo all the code for it entirely? Yeah, we'll finish this next time. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.